2017 Labor Rights Defenders Awards. I'm Yvette Herrera. I'm the president of the International Labor Rights uh, Forum Board. On behalf of the ILRF's Board of Directors and the staff, I want to thank you for joining us here this evening. We are especially grateful for a number of people. We have Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky with us today. Who is always incredibly supportive of the work of ILRF and we are forever grateful. We are also thankful for our leadership circle and our visionary sponsors this evening, the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. L Brands, the Communication Workers of America, Jules Bernstein and Linda Lipset. And we are just so very proud tonight to be presenting awards to two outstanding organizations of really courageous men and women organizing farm workers in the United States and in Honduras. And also to a visionary individual who has helped create and foster a host of new initiatives for women's rights and women workers' rights. The awardees' inspiring stories are an example of the types of campaigns and partners that the ILRF works with around the world, advocating for workers' rights for some of the most vulnerable people in some of the most dangerous parts of the world. That is the work of the ILRF. And we are so fortunate to have such a talented and committed staff who routinely go above and beyond to make a difference in workers' life. So let me now introduce them very briefly, and if they would stand as I say their name, I'd appreciate it. Leanna Foxvog, <laughs> Amy McGill. Okay, what? Let's hold the applause until I get through the names. So everyone can hear the names. Abby McGill, Sarah Newell, and Gabby Rosa, Rosaya make up the campaign team. Eric Gottwald, Andy Sheen, Elena Arengo, Kirill Boshenko, and Kevin Lynn are our policy and research team. And Aisha Brown, Deanna Alonso Watkins, and Jesus Arzola Vega keep track of our finances and lead our fundraisers. Now we can have an applause. <laughs> They deserve every bit of those applause, and it's hard to believe, but this small staff is running six global campaigns for industrial reforms in a dozen countries. They are running campaigns with partners in apparel, cotton, tropical fruit, palm oil, seafood, and tobacco, while also building worker-to-worker -worker, uh, support networks in China. Leading this talented team is our executive director, Judy Gerhardt. <laughs> Judy is passionate about this work and cares deeply about our partners and how best to support them. She's a hands-on executive director. Last year, she traveled to five countries herself to hold joint strategy sessions with our partners. Since being at the ILRF, she has grown the organization by 50%, and believe me, she has ambitious plans for the future. The ILRF Executive Director, Judy Gerhardt. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming out tonight. I want to add my thanks to Yvette's, to our wonderful board of directors that Yvette so efficiently and capably chairs. And she's just been great for motivating everybody. Um, I also have to thank our host committee members and Joe Eldridge for chairing the host committee this year. The waiters and building crew, having been a waitress for a long time, I really have to thank the waiters and building crew for all their work tonight. <laughs> Thank you. 
And I have to give a super special thanks to our event team because Diana Alonzo Watkins, Jesus Sarzola Vega, and our event consultant, Carol Burke, have done a tremendous job. Thank you so much. Again, you guys have to do that. Okay, so Yvette's right, I am ambitious. I want this organization to grow. I think there's a need, and I, I hope you'll keep coming back and help us do that. Um, a lot of us were stunned by the electoral results last November. In fact, I hope some of you remember our wonderful, wonderful skit and Eric Gottwald's <laughs> debut as Donald Trump. We almost brought him back, but we thought, no. Um, since then, We've heard a lot about how this administration intends to put America first by building walls and withdrawing from global efforts to tackle climate change and human rights. But this rhetoric is based on a false premise that we can simply turn inward and ignore the struggle of workers around the world who are trying to have a decent life and decent work. ILRF's history has proven exactly the opposite. Their struggle is our struggle. For three decades, and now we're going into our fourth decade, we've been fighting to ensure that US trade policy rewards countries that uphold basic labor standards and penalizes serial labor rights offenders. We've been fighting to make sure that the World Bank and other international financial institutions respect labor rights and promote decent work, rather than encouraging developing nations to lower wages and standards in order to attract, attract investment. That's not the way forward. And as many of you know, since you heard Leanna Fox vote get you all down here, we have a great campaign team, and we have been campaigning against corporations to get global corporations to stop running roughshod over worker rights in their supply chains. Global corporations' perpetual pursuit of cheaper prices has actively undercut opportunities to develop a broader consumer base, and it's stunted, and I think we really need to argue this, it's stunted the development of many of our trading partners around the world. It's a short-sighted strategy. It's no surprise that production jobs have left and US middle class is feeling a little bit displaced now, to say the least. So we need all of you. We need to find a way to grow the numbers of people who understand that the only way to redress disparities and injustice in the global economy is for workers to come together, not turn on, one each, other, on, on each other. So ILRF's founders knew from the start the risks of sidelining rights in pursuit of traditional economic growth. And here I have to give a shout out, and I hope you'll stand up, to two of our founders here tonight, our founding director, Ferris Harvey. <laughs> and his longtime partner in crime, John Cabana, for having this vision so long ago and helping us stick to it. There's so much work to be done. We've won significant reforms over the years, putting human rights conditionality on trade and really changing the shape of corporate accountability, but there's so much more to do. So we need vision and we need inspiration, and I'm turning to Ramon and Iris, Herminia and Edgar, because that's where you guys come in, and of course our great events are. I hope you all will come away tonight as inspired as I am by our brave awardees. Familias Unidas por la Justicia has a new vision for building community movements, for not only building a union that serves the community and building a community that helps the union, it's, it's, it's a whole new way of looking at organizing and I think it's really got a tremendous amount of potential. The Hondurans that we have here tonight, organizers from Stas and Festagro, they faced mass firings and seen their organizers beaten up and threatened for their role in organizing a union in the melon sector of Honduras. This is a struggle that's been going on for the last 20 years and I've been personally involved. 20 years ago, I did a study for the ILO documenting child labor in the Honduran melon sector and you know what, it was financed by the US Department of Labor. Where's Andy Samet? I think you were there at the time. Um, that study, basically it helped reduce child labor but it didn't solve the problem because it didn't solve the root cause of the pursuit for cut rate prices. Finally, I'm so, so excited to have Eve Ensler here tonight. I'm, I'm actually, 
I lived in New York during the heyday of the vagina monologues. For, for myself and my friends coming out, I mean, I think we, we went to see it. It was tremendous and so many times and the different people who read from it. That really was a transformative play for so many people. Translated into 48 languages and performed in 140 countries. You know, what really makes me one of your biggest fans is what you've done with your artistic acclaim, is you've turned it around to help build a movement. And you've helped raise $100 million for the fight against violence against women. It's just tremendous. And now for the awards. So we have not only great awardees, but we have some really, really special people here, and we want them to present the awards tonight. And I'm going to start with our first award presenter, Edwin Sisko. Edwin Sisko is the general secretary of a newly united union in Liberia, which is uniting industrial agriculture and precarious workers. Edwin, when he first set out to form an independent union on the Firestone rubber plantation, they threw him in jail with the hardened criminals. It wasn't a, a civil disobedience kind of jailing. They beat him up, and then somehow, I don't know, he kept on smiling and somehow made friends with those guys. I think they came out supporting you in the end. <laughs> so Edwin's union has really carved a path for how unions can help solve child labor by negotiating binding agreements that have better, more decent quotas and better working conditions. And we have just talked about his efforts and, his, and the work of the Liberian unions all around the world. Um, I'm so excited to have him here presenting from a Liberian farm worker union to a U.S. farm worker union. If that's not a really beautiful moment of solidarity, I don't know what is. Please, Edwin. Thank you. I'm honored to present the 2017 Grassroots Organizing Award to Familia Unidad. I've long been grateful for the international solidarity that the International Labor Rights Forum, the Solidarity Center, the AFL-CIO, and the Steelworkers helped build to support our campaigns back home in Liberia. I hope we can build more of that solidarity to continue supporting workers organizing in global supply chains, whether it's in Liberia, Honduras, or the United States. I had a chance to talk with Ramon Torres over the past couple of days, and I really admire his vision and that of his union brothers and sisters they are caught in a new path in union organizing by reaching out to communities all around them and building a new vision for how union can win benefits for its members and also build up and invest in their communities. We are also on mode to uh, recognize the bravery the courage, the sacrifices to take positive action in order to lift our fellow workers and build standards. Thank you very much. Buenas tardes. So, good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. ¿Cómo están? How's everybody doing? Bueno, muchísimas gracias por este reconocimiento. So, thank you for this recognition. En nombre de todos los miembros de nuestra unión. In the name of all our members. Todos están muy agradecidos. We are very thankful. 
La mayoría de nuestros miembros son indígenas. The majority of our members are indigenous. Mixtecos y triquis. Mixtecos and triquis. En su mayoría no hablan español. The majority don't speak Spanish. Pero tuvieron el coraje de enfrentarse a, a esta compañía. But they had the courage and the guts to stand up to corporations. Y organizar por tres años y medio. And to organize for three and a half years. Para lograr un contrato de unión. To reach a union contract. Esto no ha sido posible sin ustedes. This wouldn't have been possible without you. Gracias a todas las personas que ayudaron al boicoteo. Thank you. Uh, to all the people that helped in our boycott. Gracias a todas las personas que se aguantaron un momento sin comer fresas. And all the people that uh, withheld from eating strawberries for a while. <laughs> Gracias a todas las personas que sembraron sus fresas. Thanks to all those that grew your own strawberries. Saben más buenas. They're sweeter. <laughs> Estoy muy contento de estar aquí. And I'm very happy to be here. Con mi compañero Edgar. With Edgar. <laughs> Que me ayude a interpretar. That Muchas gracias. Uh, interpret estoy contento al darme cuenta de que hay muchas mujeres valientes. And I'm also uh, honored that there's also many uh, brave women. Que en vez en cuando ocupamos un liderazgo de una mujer. Uh, from time to time, we also need the leadership from of women. Nosotros en vez tenemos en la cabeza de que nosotros podemos hacer todo. Sometimes us as men, we have the idea that we can do everything by ourselves. En vez las mujeres pueden hacer algo mejor que nosotros. Sometimes women can do things better than us. <laughs> ya lo tenemos comprobado. And we have proven that. And it's been proven. Tenemos una miembro de nuestra unión. The member of our union. La que nos ayudó a poner una demanda colectiva. The one that led us in our uh, fight for a collective uh, legal action. Nos ayudó a seguir formando nuestra unión. And helped us grow, to grow our union. No, no más una. Not just one. Tenemos casi el 60% de mujeres en nuestra unión. 60% of our union is women. <laughs> nuestro... Nuestro más, algo más, lo que hace más interesante esta unión. So, one of the unique things about this union. Es de que queremos que una mujer la corra. We want to be governed by a woman. Queremos que una mujer que trabaje en los campos tenga la habilidad de dirigirnos hacia lo que queremos. We want a farm worker woman to guide, to lead us. Uh, and take to make decisions for us. Ahorita tenemos la oportunidad de cambiar un sistema. Right now we have the opportunity to change the system. Que nos han opresionado por muchísimo tiempo. A system that has oppressed us for many, many, many years. Tuvimos la oportunidad de negociar un contrato. We've had the opportunity to negotiate a contract. Que chance va a estar terminado para el 2 de junio. And hopefully by the 2nd of June we'll be finished with y it. Y vamos a empezar a trabajarlo el 18 de junio. And by June 18th we'll be able to work under a union contract. Todos sabemos cómo trabajan estos contratos. We all know how these contracts work. Beneficios. Benefits. Mejores sueldos. Better wages. Lo más importante. And the most important. Dignidad. Dignity. Queremos respeto. And we want respect. Tenemos una visión un poquito más grande. We have maybe a, a bigger vision. Tenemos una misión. We have a mission. De formar cooperativas. Of forming our own worker cooperatives. Cooperativas que den la habilidad de trabajar sin supervisores. Uh, cooperatives where we don't have to work under bosses anymore. Sin supervisores, sin patrones. No supervisors, no Nada bosses. de vigilancia. Nobody watching over y nosotros us. mismos poder decidir dónde se va nuestro dinero. And we can decide where our money goes into. Queremos formar un sistema local. We want to establish a local economy. En el, en el que nos dé la habilidad. Where de, we get the, the ability. De que nuestros trabajadores decidan en qué quieren trabajar. Where our workers can decide in what they want to work in. Queremos darles dos opciones. We want two options. Que trabajen bajo contratos de unión. To work under a union contract. O bajo cooperativas. Or under the cooperative. Pensamos que si hacemos este sistema. I think if we establish this system. En un plazo de 10 años. In 10 years. Vamos a poder sacar las compañías. We'll be able to take out the corporations. Que nos están explotando en el estado de Washington. That are exploiting us in Washington State. Hemos estado trabajando alrededor por tres meses. So, for the last three years, uh, we've been working. 
Three months, three months, sorry. Tres meses three months. en la formación de la primera cooperativa. In the formation of our first cooperative. Estamos sembrando 15 acres. We've been, we're, har, we're growing on 15 acres. En el que queremos poner como ejemplo esta cooperativa. Where we want to uh, put this cooperative as an example. Para un proyecto que tenemos en mente. For this uh, project that we have in mind. Estamos en un proyecto con el estado de Washington. We're in a project with uh, Washington State. Que chance a finales de este año. And by the end of this year, hopefully, vamos a agarrar 100 acres de tierra. We'll be able to get 100 acres. Ahorita tenemos trabajadores con cinco arquitectos. We have workers right now that are meeting with five architects. En Seattle. En Seattle. De, de, uh, tratando de diseñar nuestras cooperativas. Designing our cooperatives. Estoy muy emocionado. And I'm very happy. Yo pensaba que nuestra vida nomás era trabajar. I used to think that our life was just only work. Llegar a descansar y estar listos para otro día. Then go home and sleep and get ready to work again. Yo no, tu no tuve una oportunidad de estudiar. I never had the opportunity to study. No tuve la oportunidad de trabajar en una unión. I never had the opportunity to work under a union. ¿Y quién se iba a imaginar que ahorita soy presidente? And who would ever imagine that now I'm a president for a union? <laughs> Ha sido muy difícil. It's been difficult. Pero tenemos una gran necesidad. But we have, our need is great. Queremos un mejor futuro para nuestros hijos. We want a better future for our children. Si saben la agricultura, es legal que nuestros hijos a los 12 años trabajen. If you know about agriculture, at 12 years old, it's legal to have our kids working in the no fields. Queremos, yo no quiero que mis hijos estén dándoles de comer a ustedes. And I don't want my kids to be feeding you. Queremos que, queremos que tengan la oportunidad. I want them to have the opportunity que a los 16 años, that at 16 decidan qué quieren, qué quieren hacer. they can decide for themselves what they want to si do. Quieren trabajar o seguir estudiando. If they want to study or if they want to work. No porque no tenemos un sueldo justo. It's because we don't have a just wage. Por eso tienen que estar trabajando. It, it's that they shouldn't be out working. Entonces, todo esto, gracias a Dios, va a cambiar bajo este contrato de unión. So all this is going to change, uh, God willing, under this union contract. Ojalá y sirviera de un ejemplo para todo el estado de Washington. Hopefully it's also an example for the rest of Washington state. Para que saquen a nuestros hijos de los campos. To take our kids out of the fields. Muchísimas gracias. So thank you. Gracias a las señoras de Honduras. Thank you uh, to the folks from Honduras, the women from Honduras. Por ser la cara de sus trabajadores. For being the face of the workers in Honduras. Yo sé que no es fácil. I know it's not easy. En mi caso he recibido muchas amenazas. You know, in my case we've been threatened. Yo creo que todos. Everybody's probably Estaba been threatened. Estaba escuchando también el caso de Edwin. I've heard also about Edwin's case. Es muy duro. It's difficult. Pero si no hacemos nada. But if we don't do nothing. Nada nos va a llegar a las manos. Nothing is going to be Así arrived que, right in our hands. Muchísimas gracias y sí se puede. Thank you. Se puede. ¡Se puede! ¡Sí se puede! ¡Sí se puede! ¡Sí se puede! ¡Sí se puede! ¡Gracias! Bueno, Ramón Torres, on behalf of the executive board, the executive director staff, of the International Labor Rights Forum, as well as the uh, Labor Rights Defenders, and then the uh, grassroots workers from around the world who want to present to you this award. Please accept our congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. serving on the fundraising committee. So I think it's on me to remind you all that this is a fundraising event. <laughs> and we are still $5,000 short of our target. And so we want to change that. You got these chocolates and you thought it was just chocolates. <laughs> But indeed, it's a stealth fundraising appeal. So you take this little QR code and you like 
put your phone on it and you can make a contribution to, to help with that $5,000 gap. I'm not kidding, right? This is for real. I'm also the executive director of the Virginia Interfaith Center for Public Policy. Um, a, I moved there from uh, being in Chicago at Interfaith Worker Justice for many years. Um, and I know how important small and large contributions are to nonprofits like ILRF. Um, which is why uh, just two weeks ago I changed my will to make sure I could put ILRF in it. Um, and I, I'm not, you can not, you can, oh nice. But, but more important, <laughs> But more important, I want some of you to do that too, right? Because um, we think we're not going to die, but as someone whose husband died uh, being fine one day and dead the next, you know, people die. And so if you don't have a will, now's the time to do it. Um, and if you have one, change it and put ILRF in it. <laughs> Now the real reason Judy asked me to present this award, award is because I have a personal connection to our 2017 International Grassroots Organizing Award to Stas and Vistagro. I learned about their struggles through my late husband, Stephen Coates. Stephen spent many years working to raise the profiles of these brave men and women in Honduras, responding to urgent actions when they came under threat. He would be proud to see the campaign that they are waging against Fife right now. Um, and he would be outraged and incensed by the abuse that these workers continue to endure, as am I, and as we too should be. And so I want you to join me in welcoming two amazing women leaders for our International Grassroots Organizing Award. We have tonight with us two women, Herminia Carranza, who's an organizer with the local union Stas. We are glad Herminia is here with us tonight, and I'm told, even though I don't know her, that she's faced some amazing challenges even to get here, having to go from her home to, in southern Honduras to the capital several times just to get a visa. But also, we want to honor Iris Mungia. Now, Iris I met um, at the last trip I made with my husband was to a banana conference. And it was actually the first time I ever had to go, I ever had the opportunity to go on a work trip because our kids were finally off to college. Um, and so we went on this trip. And as soon as I got there, he said, I want you to meet Iris. You have to meet Iris. Um, and the reason is she's a program officer for Festagro, the Federation of Agricultural Unions, where Stas is affiliated. Iris is also the current coordinator for the region-wide banana union coordinating body, COSIBA, which represents 45,000 banana workers. The majority of them are men throughout Latin America. She is an amazingly strong leader, and I have only heard amazing things about her. So I hope you will join me in welcoming both these women. Good evening, everyone. Eh, queremos agradecer, verdad, esta ceremonia de reconocimiento. We want to thank everyone for this night of recognition. Más que todo, esas miles de trabajadoras y trabajadores en Honduras. More than anything, the thousands and thousands of workers, uh, women and men workers in Honduras. Eh, reconocen todo ese esfuerzo y ese acompañamiento al trabajo que se viene haciendo a nivel de la región. They recognize all that effort and all of that support um, that you are giving in the region. Queremos agradecer mucho a ILRF, verdad, eh, eh, que está haciendo estos reconocimientos. 
pero también queremos muy especial reconocer a Weselip, ¿verdad? We want to thank very much to ILRF for, for um, programming this event of recognition, but we really want to thank uh, the work of U.S. Sleep. Que la compañera mencionaba, ¿verdad? El, todo el trabajo que Esteban venía haciendo, y no solo a nivel de Honduras, sino que a nivel de toda la región, eh, lo conocimos, un hombre muy comprometido con el trabajo eh, de nosotros en el movimiento sindical, y yo como mujer, y yo como mujer me siento muy honrada del apoyo que hizo para que yo esté ahora eh, coordinando la colsiva. And I want to thank, as our friend said, um, the years and years and years that um, Stephen was supporting us on the ground. Um, and I especially want to mention um, that I, as a woman, how Stephen supported me as a woman for, for me to be here now in front of you. Eh, por lo menos estos dos días me ha dado la oportunidad también de, de conocer a los compañeros de a, a Ramón, ¿verdad? Y a los compañeros, al compañero de Liberia. And so these past two days I've had the opportunity to meet some friends, some comrades, Ramón and, um, uh, and uh, Edwin from Liberia. Y a los otros compañeros, la, la compañera también que la conocí, ahora la miramos por segunda vez, y que aunque el, idio, aunque el idioma sea un obstáculo, aunque las fronteras también sean a veces un obstáculo, pero consideramos que el trabajo que andamos haciendo es similar todos, luchando a beneficio de los trabajadores y de las trabajadoras eh, a nivel del mundo. ¿eh? And so I've been able to meet our friends, and, and I'm, I'm meeting um, an, another friend for the second time. And even though there are borders that separate us, and these are obstacles, we believe that our fight is the same, and the benefits of, of this fight is the same. A pesar de que nosotros somos una federación de sindicatos de trabajadores de la agroindustria, y también que tenemos una experiencia de trabajo a nivel de la región en todo Centroamérica, Colombia, Ecuador y Perú, en la agroindustria. Um, and even though uh, we are working within the Federation of Agroindustrial Workers, we also um, are working with the regional uh, federation, which is Colciba, um, who works in all of Central, Central America, uh, Colombia and, um, and, and Peru. Y podemos decir que hay algunos pequeños avances, ¿verdad?, en el trabajo que se viene realizando, algunos convenios que se han firmado con transnacionales a nivel de la región. Mencionábamos ahora en la mañana el convenio Colsiva, Uita, Chiquita. And so we have been doing some small advances each time um, with work we mentioned this morning uh, in our meeting some um, conventions that we signed with multinational companies the one that i mentioned is with colciba um, iuf and uh, chiquita banana que las mujeres a nivel de la región nos dimos la tarea de revisar los códigos de trabajo los contratos colectivos en cada uno de nuestros países y revisar qué contenido específico había para las mujeres ahí And so the women um, we organized in the region, we um, would look into the codes of, of conduct, we would look into the collective bargaining agreements, and in, in the, our investigations, we would find out specifically what are the issues that women face. Y obvio, ¿verdad? Eh, solo la, la, eh, el artículo de la maternidad y la lactancia, porque somos las mujeres las que parimos, entonces nos dimos la tarea de construir una plataforma reivindicativa de las mujeres bananeras con contenido de género y que se utilice en las negociaciones colectivas que tenemos a nivel de la región. So um, we looked at the specific articles um, in these codes of conduct and in um, these papers and we saw that the only um, thing for women was maternity, uh, maternity rights and breastfeeding rights. And so we got together and we formed a platform that specifically focused on um, the issues that women face as, uh, that, women, that women face and the gender-based issues. Y como decimos, aunque hay algunos pequeños avances, pero también hay muchos problemas a nivel de las condiciones laborales de las trabajadoras 
principalmente en las meloneras en la zona sur de nuestro país. So besides these, all of these advances, we still realize that there are many problems, specifically with the women in the southern region of the country. De donde viene la compañera Herminia Vega, que ella es una trabajadora de la, del sector melón, y a mí más bien me gustaría que por lo menos ella les contara eh, su experiencia como mujer trabajadora eh, en, en la melonera, ¿verdad? Que ahora te levanta cuando llega la, al trabajo y todo eh, su experiencia de trabajo. ¿verdad? So we have here Edminia, who's a worker. She works in the melon sector. And I'd like for you guys to hear a little bit about the experience of her as a woman um, at the melon plantations, what time she gets up, um, what the specific things that, that she has to go through. Muy buenas noches a los que están presentes acá. Queremos agradecerles por este homenaje que nos están haciendo. Les agradecemos porque hemos sido bien recibidas acá. Y yo quiero, verdad, contarles una experiencia de que, de los problemas que nosotros tenemos en los trabajos allá. Um, good, uh, good evening to you all. I want to thank you so much um, for receiving me here. We have been very well received in, in our time so far, and I want to tell you a little bit about um, my experiences. Soy una mujer que tengo 19 años de trabajar. Y para mí ha sido duro, porque yo... Desde las 2 de la mañana me levanto a hacer oficio para venir a trabajar. Um, I've been, I, I'm a woman and I've been a woman worker for 19 years. And as a worker, it's been hard for me. Um, I wake up at 2 in the morning uh, to um, prepare for the day and, and yeah, pre prepare for the day. Y es un martirio para uno de mujer porque desde el momento que uno llega al trabajo a las 6 de la mañana, Uno trabaja y a veces no desayuna, a veces viene a desayunar a las 12 del día. And it's hard, uh, especially hard as a woman worker. Sometimes we get to work at 6 in the morning and we don't have breakfast until, uh, until noon. Y cuando uno sale a desayunar a las 12 del día, tiene que comer en pleno solazo. No hay sombra, no hay nada para uno. And when we finally get to have breakfast at noon, you have to eat in, in the, under the hot blazing sun without any shade, without anything. Otra cosa que es duro que, que a veces uno este, está en medio de los lotes trabajando y no lo dejan salir al baño a uno. Another thing that I want to mention that is very hard um, is sometimes we're working in the middle of the fields and they don't let you go to the bathroom. Le quiero contar una historia yo de que estaba trabajando un día. Mire, estábamos trabajando en medio del lote y salimos a la otra cabecera. Cuando salimos allá, ya íbamos con C. Y yo le dije al, al supervisor que andaba, tenemos C, vamos a ir a tomar agua. No, tienen que regresar con el surco para que salgan a tomar agua. Pues entonces yo me opuse. Y yo le dije, pues señor, si usted me corre porque yo voy a ir a tomar agua, pues córrame. Pero yo voy a ir a tomar agua. Desde ese momento él dijo, una, yo me fui. Entonces una compañera me siguió a tomar agua. Entonces dijo él, pues vayan, se dijo, a tomar agua. Propuesta que me corriera. I want to tell you a story. Um, I was working one day, we were in the middle of the field, and they were transferring us to another field, and I told our supervisor, we're thirsty. And the, two, the supervisor told me, no, you can't go get a drink, because that would mean we have to go back to the other field. And I opposed him. I said, no, I'm going to go back, and I need a drink, because I'm thirsty. And so I went. Um, even though he said not to, and he said, uh, when I went, I had another uh, uh, woman worker who followed me, and, and they were yelling at us and saying, well, go, you're going to be fired. ¿Y sabe qué es lo duro? Que dejamos todas las fuerzas en esas, en esas empresas meloneras, y ahora no los reconocen nada. Yo tengo 60 años, y para mí ya no hay trabajo ya. No hay trabajo. And one, the, one of the most hardest things is that we put all our effort into, into the melon plantations, and we don't get anything back. I'm 60 years old and I have nothing left. Yo hice un esfuerzo de venir acá. Para mí no era tan fácil venir acá, ¿verdad? Pero yo lo, lo estoy haciendo y lo hago por mis hijos y nietos que vienen para arriba. Yo ya no voy a lograr eso ya. Ya no lo voy a lograr. You know, and I want to tell you that I made a really big effort to come here. It was not easy for, 
for me to come here. And I might not see the, the fruits of the work that I do, um, but I do this for my kids and for my grandkids. Porque incluso cuando, cuando yo este, este, fui a sacar la vida, no me la querían dar. No me la querían dar. Tuve que hacer una, una, otra este, esfuerzo yo de ir, pero a la siguiente vez sí me la dieron. Y gracias a Dios estoy acá. And I want to tell you something, that um, when I went to apply for a visa the first time, they didn't give it to me. They didn't want to give me the visa, and they denied it. But I went a second time, and now I'm here. Yo agradezco por el recibimiento que los han hecho. Agradezco por el recibimiento que los han hecho y, y que también yo les pido que los sigan apoyando en la lucha que estamos haciendo nosotros. I want to thank you so much for, 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 the honor, for you honoring me tonight and I want to ask you to continue to support our work. to the condition that we face in back home in Bangladesh, and we are facing this both making products for the US market. My name is Kalpana Attar, and I'm the team leader for Bangladesh Center for Work at Solid Aid. As the 2011 Labor Rights Defender Award recipient, it is my honor uh, to introduce the recipient of the year's Visionary Leaders Award. But before I do that, I wanted to tell a little bit about me and why this, you know, the advocate should do it is personal or close to my heart. I started working when I was 12 without knowing any law and rights, and later becoming law and rights and becoming union president in my shop floor when I was 16 and later fired and blacklisted. And I never stopped. Though I have experienced this violence personally, by the relatives, by the supervisors, by the transport workers, and sometimes I was quiet because I didn't know that how to speak out. But when I started knowing how to speak out, I never stopped. I did speak. And I will do. The forms, form of violations can be very. It starts with catcalling to inappropriate touch by the supervisors, transport workers, shopkeepers, and also the supervisor, supervisors at the shop at, at the production floor asking the women to have the sexual favor in order to uh, let them go home early or a promotion or a wage increase. To the women who become union organizers to fight for their rights, they name and shame, not only in the factory, also in their houses. And it's a cultural table out there not to speak out on that. You women, you talk about the sexual abuses, you bad. It's your fault you got raped, or it is your fault that you catcalled. To change this culture of violence, we need fearless people to help inspire us to find the courage to speak out. Eve Ensler is one of those people for millions of women. This 
morning, Congresswoman Jen Shikorsky hosted a briefing on gender-based violence with us, and she will tell more about uh, 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 it, and this is very personal. I want to thank uh, Kalpona uh, Akhtar, who was part of this panel this morning, along with our two sisters from Honduras, talking about violence against women in the, in the workplace. You've heard some of that tonight, and it's universal, unfortunately, um, from the uh, fields in Honduras to the boardrooms in uh, Silicon Valley. So we have a lot of work to do. But tonight, we get to honor a force of nature, a woman I love so much. Eve Ensler is the Tony Award winning playwright, activist, performer, and author of the Vagina Monologues, which has been published in 48 languages and performed in 140 countries. I think our sisters will agree, Eve really taught us not only to say vagina, <laughs> but to respect and even love our vaginas. Right, sisters? <laughs> Eve is the founder of V-Day, the 20-year-old global activist movement to end violence against women and girls, which has raised over, you heard earlier, a hundred million dollars for that effort. V-Day led Eve to also found One Billion Rising, the biggest global mass action to end violence against women in human history, in human history, in over 200 countries. She writes in the, for The Guardian, Time Magazine, and the International Herald Tribune. She was named one of Newsweek's 150 Women Who Changed the World, and The Guardian's 100 Most Influential Women. And so for Kalpona and I, it is a tremendous honor to give her this year's Visionary Leader Award. Please welcome Eve Enzler. <laughs> I know there's some hard work in vaginas here tonight, <laughs> and hard work in men who love vaginas. Um, and I just want to thank um, Jan and Calpona. Um, I want to say that Jan was always brave enough to stand up for vaginas, and you've been standing up for vaginas a long time. And, um, and I love you, and I appreciate you, and you're one of the few who's in there all the time doing the best thing. <laughs> And I, I just want to say that I feel humbled and, to be honest, a little embarrassed um, to be standing in the presence of such brave, devoted, visionary labor rights defenders as Kalpana, Ramon, Iris, Herminia, and Edwin from Liberia, who've worked with their lives and hearts to make the conditions of working men and women more equal, fair, just, and dignified. No, I honestly bow to you. I bow to you. And I'm really honored um, to accept this award from the International Labor Rights Forum, which is such a brilliant frontline human rights organization holding global corporations accountable for labor rights in their supply chains, for protecting workers, and making sure workers have the ability to advocate for their own rights. And I just want to particularly honor Judy and Liana, who have been such incredible collaborators and such beautiful, fierce, working women. Thank you. I have to say that in these bizarre and horrifying times, 
our country being led by a predator in chief with an expanding, mutating, and deepening predatory mindset in every direction, values of profit and money for the one tiny 0.1% over life itself, you know, this exploiting of earth and women's bodies and the truth and the press and people of color and Muslims and the disabled and LBGTQ and Mexicans and immigrants and of course workers. I can't think of more important work than ending the exploitation of human beings, particularly those who do the fundamental work that makes life possible for the majority of humans on this planet. And I want to say that um, over the last five years, One Billion Rising has grown and grown, and we've been influenced, obviously, by the world and women of the world who determine the agenda and the themes and what One Billion Rising will focus on. And last year, when we gathered in Croatia with all of our global coordinators, it was very clear that the rights of women workers were of paramount uh, in looking at the issues of violence against women. For too long, we have kept these issues separate, as if what happens to women's bodies over here is one issue, and what happens to the bodies of women workers over here is another issue. And I have to say that last year, we made a group uh, decision, a world decision, that we were going to start to find a way to weave these issues together. And so we highlighted connecting issues that condone, promote, escalate, and sustain worsening exploitative condition of workers. From roots of poverty to endemic abuse of workers, domestic workers, migrant workers, factory workers, restaurant workers, shop workers, garment workers, farm workers, they rose to demand economic, political, and social system change. Workers Rising also highlighted the massive problems of human labor and sex trafficking whose roots also lie in poverty. From women peasants and indigenous communities rising against mining, fracking, and other extractive companies, and against the plunder of environment and natural resources, to factory workers rising against abuse from multinational companies inside export processing zones from nurses rising for better pay and dignity of labor, to government workers rising against their own employers, from restaurant workers rising for minimum wage, to migrant and domestic workers rising against abusive labor practices, from garment workers rising for safety in the workplace, to workers everywhere rising for livable wage, safety, dignity, equal pay, and more. And women workers rose everywhere against the neoliberal attack on wages, and against the degradation of workers everywhere, reducing them to no more than cogs, part of a global capitalist wheel that keeps churning for profit, which is not served or go, ever goes back to workers at all. I think that OBR 2017 reflected a significant call from grassroots women for their demands. It also highlighted it in a much more serious way that the fight against violence against women is rooted in insidious forms of violence apart from patriarchy and misogyny, including capitalism, neoliberalism, racism, neo-fascism, and imperialism, and that these systems collude to create dominating, oppressive, and exploited situations for women everywhere on the planet. Grassroots women around the world, including those in more developed Western countries, are victims of violence precisely because they are from the most exploited sectors rooted in class, race, and gender. This includes the massive exploitation caused by economic and environmental violence. OBO, OBO coordinators and organizers everywhere embrace the focus on exploit, exploitation for this reason. And women across the globe are suffering from the reign of neoliberalism that has worsened social and economic conditions for women everywhere. Hunger has reached new levels, and poverty can no longer be excluded as a distinct form of violence. Joblessness, homelessness, labor exploitation, forced labor, government cutbacks to social services, landlessness, contractualization, lowering of minimum wage, privatization, displacement from wars and militarization, human and sex trafficking are all outcomes of a global system that is plunging most of the world into economic crisis. 
And I have to say for myself, um, and I apologize for my voice, I've been sick, but I have to say for these last years, I have been profoundly um, honored and um, my understanding of the issues facing women has been deepened. I've had the opportunity to meet women workers in Bangladesh, where I was last year in Dhaka, and I spent time with women from the Rania Plaza collapse. And to hear the stories of the kind of um, uh, psychopathic injustice that happens to workers knowing that a building is about to collapse, where they are sent in against their will, being threatened with being fired, while all the people at the bottom floor who had more money and more um, power had already left those buildings, to have that many people die, and then to see no recourse, no payments for their injuries, no support from the government to change those conditions um, was a profoundly um, and disturbing awakening. I spent time in the Philippines with the workers in the Kentex factory where I marched with them, where the workers were in a factory where they were literally kept in a box and contained so when a fire broke out, they had no escape <coughs> and many died. <coughs> I spent time with domestic workers in Hong Kong and I have to say the conditions of domestic workers in Hong Kong were so appalling that I didn't sleep for two weeks after hearing it. And the kind of, um, the kind of grotesque exploitation that verges on a new form of high-class sadism. Um, in the U.S., I've spent much time over the last year with restaurant workers and nurses, Walmart workers, and the amount of workplace violence that is not only allowed, but has become normalized in this country, is astounding. For example, 75 to 90% of nurses um, experience scratching, biting, kicking, or some form of violence on the job. We know that sexual harassment is the highest in the restaurant industry because waitresses are reliant on tips. Um, I was interviewing Walmart workers who were telling me that they are literally grabbed and raped in the meat lockers when they go in to get meat and they go in to get frozen goods. Um, I have now seen and heard how undervalued, exploited, and unseen women workers are here and across the globe and how much violence there is towards women in the workplace. I've marched, um, and I very happily thank you so much, marched this um, and, and I'm really thrilled to say we were able, through One Billion Rising and through the efforts of Liana and Judy and so many other amazing working groups from AFL-CIO to the restaurant workers to the nurses to bring together and work together over a year in a coalition of women workers groups, which I think is one of the first times this has ever happened in the country, and to put on a massive demonstration in D.C. in March where 5,000 people rose to demand the rights of working women in this country. And I think it's really exciting. And I, 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 I know for um, everyone at OBR, because we, I just came from our staff meeting, that we have decided to continue the theme of ending exploitation against women on to this next year, and to join and, 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 and really <coughs> elevate what it means to be in solidarity across borders, across issues, across different forms of work. We have to, particularly in this country, understand that until all working women come together and understand that what happens to restaurant workers and nurses and Walmart workers and teachers is the same story. It's not a separate story, it's our story. And what happens to workers here and women workers here is the same story that's happening in Dhaka, in Liberia, in Honduras, in Mexico. And we are joined in a worldwide struggle to end corporate domination and free workers to live dignified lives. So I, I just want to close by saying, um, you know, the way to fight predation is through connection and solidarity and through love. And I really believe we have a huge, oppor a really huge opportunity with this current administration. Um, all of what um, is at stake in our future has been laid bare. And all of what we haven't addressed in our past has been laid bare. We have an opportunity now to rise and really go all the way. Because when things are this bad, there are huge cracks that we can go through. And I hope we will all keep workers, because most people in the world, it turns out, are workers. 
keep workers in the front of our consciousness because they hold up the world. And I want to say particularly about women. Women do the fundamental work. They do the central work. They do the critical work. If they did not do it, none of us would be here. Yet they are the most underpaid, unvalued, unseen, unrecognized, and uncherished. And were we to flip that and pay women the most for the hardest work, cherish women the most, give women the most dignified, and the whole world would change on a dime. So I thank you all so much. conditions. We can't help but be inspired by their work. This concludes our program. Good night, and we hope to see you next year.